Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault. And once again, I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is on a really cool 22 rifle from Thompson Center. And Thompson Center is a subsidiary of Smith & Wesson. This particular gun is the TCR22, and it is supposed to be a clone or a copy of the Ruger 1022 with some improvements. But before we get into the things I like and don't like about this gun, I want to thank the people that always make these range reports possible. First and foremost is the owner of this awesome rifle, and that is a local subscriber and good Good friend Jack. Jack, thank you so much for letting me borrow so many of your awesome guns to produce this content. I want to thank my Patreons as always because through their monthly donation and support they help keep the lights on around here by helping me buy equipment to keep this content coming. And as always, the person that supplies all of the ammunition for these range reports, thus making them financially feasible, and that is my good friend Mark from an amazing company called Brownworks. If you have been watching my channel for any length of time, you guys know I rant and rave about Brownworks. Not just because they're a sponsor, but because Mark over there makes some of the best grips on the market. He is an artist. He is a master craftsman. He can make some of the finest quality wood grips for a wide variety of firearms out of a wide variety of exotic woods and materials. Not only can he make some of the best grips on the market, but he can also put on custom logos and engrave. If you have a Colt 1911, a Beretta 92, or a CZ, you need to go check out Brownworks. And beyond making grips for just those pistols, he also offers a lot more. He even offers custom engraved magazines for like Magpul P mags and AK 47s. If you have some type of logo that you would like to see on your modern sporting rifle magazines, he can do that as well. I know that I'm rolling in some photos of some of his best work and you guys can see the quality that goes into these grips. So I'm asking you go over to his website, which I will put as a pinned comment. And I will also put in the description as well as a discount code for 10% off your first order. Go over there, see what Mark has to offer, see what Brownworks can do for you. And if you don't find what you're looking for, make sure to drop Mark an email. I guarantee you he will get back to you really fast. He has amazing customer service and most likely he'll be able to hook you up. And when you do contact him, please tell him the Texas Gun Vault sent you. All right, so let's talk about this awesome rifle and exactly what it is. As I've already mentioned, it is supposed to be a copy of a Ruger 1022. It's supposed to accept many of the Ruger accessories, magazines, and so forth, but it's made by a different company. Now, this is really nothing new. As you guys know, the Ruger 1022 is one of the most popular rifles in America, and the aftermarket for these guns is amazing. In fact, I brought out my own Ruger 1022 here just to show you what I did. The only thing on this particular build that is a Ruger 1022 or came from Ruger is the receiver. Everything else is aftermarket. It is amazing. I have everything from a Magpul stock here to specialty trigger groups, a specialty barrel, you name it. I have everything on this, but only one thing was made by Ruger. So I have customized this to what I want. And so having a company essentially copying the Ruger design, as I said, is nothing new. Now Ruger makes a fantastic 22 caliber rifle, but there's always been a few things about that gun that people go, well, they definitely need to modernize or make more available. So I think that Thompson Center kind of took that idea and ran with it. So let's talk about the things that I like and don't like about this particular gun. And we're gonna start with what I think is the biggest improvement on this gun. And that is, it actually has a bolt hold open on the last round. So right now the gun is safety checked, but I will pull this bolt back. Oh, and look at that. Unlike a Ruger 1022 that will close, this one stays open. Now, the way it does this is through a mechanism in their proprietary magazines. Now, the good news is, if you have a whole bunch of Ruger magazines like this BX-15, they also work and fit. But unfortunately, the bolt will not hold open on an empty round because it doesn't have this little lever and loading gate that is on the back of the magazine. And that is right there. So if you do have the Thompson Center proprietary magazines, you do have a last round bolt hold open. That 
is so cool. And one of the things I have always complained about when it comes to the Ruger rifles, I'm like, why can't they design something to make that happen? After all, pretty much every other semi-automatic rifle out there has it. I also like the fact this gun comes with a threaded barrel. Now, yes, Ruger does offer a threaded barrel on some of their models, but their base model doesn't have it. Now, when it comes to the pecking order of things, I'm not sure where this particular rifle falls in the Thompson Center lineup. It might be the base model, but it might be one of the more advanced models. I'm not 100% sure. I just review the rifles as I get them. And I try to review these from an average gun guy's perspective, meaning, hey, I went to the range or I went to a gun show, picked one of these things up. I might not have done a huge amount of research on it. Sometimes that can be good and sometimes that can be bad. But I want to experience the gun for what it is. And so having that threaded barrel on there is really nice. I also like the fact that this gun has some really cool sights. We have a fiber optic front sight here in the front, and our sight radius is longer. A lot of times on the base model of the Ruger 1022s, your rear sight is right here towards the back of the barrel. But here they have the rear sight at the end of the receiver, and that is gonna give you a longer sight radius. And so I think that's gonna make the gun definitely more accurate. It also appears that the Picatinny rail, which is milled into the top of the receiver is also an improvement. You can put a rail on a 1022, but it has to be tapped and drilled if the receiver doesn't already have that and you have to attach it with screws. This is gonna make this a much more solid mounting point for optics. I really do like this stock as well. Now on my personal 1022, I do have a Magpul stock and this is the stock that I've been kind of used to seeing. I've never seen a stock like this. And this stock, as I said, is made by Magpul, but it's very different. It seems to be robust, but it's also minimalistic. The back here is definitely smaller. It's lighter in the back, and I kind of like this design. It has the same angle here with the stock that the typical Magpul stocks do have, but as I said, it just seems to be more minimalistic. And I even like the color of this OD green. I think it looks very attractive. Besides that, I don't think there's really much else to say about it besides it's just a very attractive rifle that I really like. Now let's talk about the things that I don't like. And actually on this one, it's gonna be kind of rare. I don't really have anything negative to say about it. After handling it here on the table, looking at it, kind of just touching it, going through its options, I'm like, wow, this thing really is an amazing improvement over a standard 1022. Everything seems well built, it seems comfortable. Every option that's on it, I like. There's nothing about this gun that I don't like. And it fixes some of the problems, or supposedly fixes some of the problems, like that bolt hold open, that I've always complained about on the Ruger 1022. So as of right now, I have nothing negative to say about this rifle. So let's go ahead and get this thing to the range. Let's see how it shoots. So I'm gonna set the target out at 15 yards for my first magazine, and I'm gonna use the proprietary magazine just to see if this bolt hold open works. I'm gonna run some CCI mini mags through this. And let's just see how it performs. And so for my first shots and my baseline experience, I'm pretty darn happy. I'm amazed that this thing actually works. The bolt hold open works. That is so cool. It's something I have always wanted on a Ruger 1022.
Now, the only thing after shooting it that I noticed that I wish was a little bit different is that it does seem like this rear sight is just a little bit low. And not from a aiming standpoint, just from how it lines up with the back of the stock here and the cheek weld. I kind of feel like it's just a little bit too low and I have to get my head really far down. I think the better option would have been with what Magpul does on their other Ruger 1022 stocks and that the stock itself is pretty low and then you can adjust everything with a cheek riser. I like this setup a little bit more because if your head does not conform to how high this is, you might have a little bit of issue and I definitely did. I'm just going to have to make sure that this goes a little bit higher on my cheek than I normally would use another rifle. So that's the only complaint that I really have. So let's put the target out now at about twice the distance, 20, 25 yards. I'm now gonna try one of the Ruger magazines to see if I have any issues. I know the bolt's not gonna hold open after the last round, but I'm gonna try a BX-15 magazine, still running CCI mini mags, see if I have any issues and what happens to this group. And at the further distance, I think I shot it even better. And now that I'm getting used to how high this cheek riser is on this particular stock, it's shooting really well and I'm more comfortable with it. In fact, this stock is really winning me over. I don't know if Magpul offers this as a standard aftermarket stock or not, or if it's just for the Thompson Center guns, but I really like this. As I said, it's robust, it feels sturdy, but it's minimalistic. All right, so now that this thing is shooting so well, I'm gonna bench rest it. Yeah, I don't bench rest many guns, but this gun, I think definitely more is intended for a target audience. So we're gonna do it that way. So I'm gonna set up a couple bags. I'm gonna bench rest this thing, see how good the group can be at 25 yards. But now I'm gonna change the ammunition because sometimes these semi-auto 22s can be a little bit picky. CCI mini mags almost always work in every gun. So now I'm just gonna move to CCI standard velocity and I'm going to use an aftermarket magazine. So this is from Tactical Inc. It's an aluminum magazine. I'm just curious if all these different accessories are going to work with this. So I'm going to load this magazine up with 20 rounds, bench rest it, CCI standard velocity, see if I have any issues and how well it shoots.
And this gun is super accurate. Well, I wouldn't expect anything less. The only thing I'm noticing on this aftermarket mag is that it is a little bit wobbly here in the stock. The gun still ran fine, but still no issues with this. And sometimes this can be an issue on Ruger 1022s as well. So it's just something to pay attention to. Now, when it comes to the trigger, I have to say this is where I'm a little bit disappointed. The wall is fantastic. It breaks very consistently. However, the trigger does have a little bit of grit on the take up. For a gun that I think is designed for target shooting, that grit should definitely not be there. So I think that definitely needs a little bit of an upgrade. And the reset seems to be a little bit longer than the standard Ruger 1022. It's just a little bit longer than what I would want if I was going to have a gun like this for target practice. It just needs to be refined just a little bit, but it's definitely usable. It's definitely manageable. I would just expect a little bit more. All right. And as always, I want to give my wife Becky a shot at shooting this. She loves to shoot every gun that comes through the Texas Gun Vault, and we're going to mix up the ammo and mags just to make sure everything works with everything. And I'm going to load up the BX-15 magazine with some CCI standard velocity, make sure it runs in this configuration, and get her thoughts. After all, she's a very different shooter than I am, so I'm really curious what she's going to say. And she told me after shooting it, she loves all 22 pew pews. So she had a great time with this. And by the way, the Ruger BX-15 magazine also wobbles in the stock a little bit. It doesn't come out and it seems to feed reliably. She really liked it. The only issue she had was one concern that I did as well, and that is how high this piece of the stock is when it comes to your cheek. I just wish it was a little bit lower, and if you need it higher, it should have some type of cheek riser that's adjustable or added on like the other Magpul stock that I showed you. All right, so there's another test I want to do when it comes to ammunition. Now, I have some of this Federal Bulk Auto Match ammo. And if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, I use this ammo a lot when it comes to semi-automatic pistols and rifles, but it has been very hit or miss. For whatever reason, some guns like it, some guns do not. And I'd actually have to say more guns don't like it. It is high velocity ammunition, so it should cycle in all of these semi-auto rifles. But I wanted to test it out because maybe you're buying a 22 rifle because you want to save some money. Maybe you're not like an expert marksman target shooter. You just want something you can go out to the farm and plink with, and you're going to buy that bulk pack ammo. So I'm hoping this ammo is going to work. We're going to find out. As I said, it is federal auto match and it's the bulk pack, so hopefully it's gonna run in here. If it runs in this gun, well, I already know this is gonna be a great gun to own because it's probably gonna feed everything you put in the magazines, and that, for me, is a huge plus with any semi-automatic 22 rifle. So, as I said, I'm gonna open another magazine and just make sure this ammunition runs.
And in case you were wondering, I was using the 10 round mag with the bowl hold open. When it came to that ammunition test, it seems to run fine. Everything worked and I'm really happy with it. So no complaints there. This thing is really well built and designed well. And I was also shooting for the head on that IDPA target. So the last thing I wanna do is just do a mag dump with it. Yeah, this gun is not really designed for tactical shooting or shooting fast, but why not? It's a 22 rifle, I'm out the range. If you own one of these, you just wanna have some fun with it. So I'm gonna mix and match all the ammo I brought. CCI mini mag, CCI standard velocity, and this federal bulk ammo. Load up a magazine, just shoot it as fast as I can and make sure everything runs. And this gun ran perfectly. I'm telling you, I have not had a malfunction all day. And that says a lot for a 22 caliber gun. Usually you're gonna have an ammo issue, you're gonna have a feeding issue, an ejection issue, something's gonna happen because it's just not as reliable as center fire. Well, this gun has ran perfectly. I'm very impressed with that. And I can shoot it pretty darn fast, even with that little bit of a grit in the trigger. So this thing is really, really impressing me. What a fun, all around 22 caliber rifle to own. This thing is just awesome and I'm very impressed by it. Being that the fact that it's the first Thompson firearm that I've ever reviewed, I have to say I'm very impressed and I really wanna get my hands on some more Thompson Center stuff. If all other stuff is built this nice, well, I think this might be a firearm that I would be very interested in owning in the future. So what are my final thoughts on the TCR-22 by Thompson Center? Well, let's just say I love this gun. I love the Ruger 1022. I think it's a fantastic design and it addresses many of the issues that I have had with that particular rifle in the past. The upgrades on it are great. The fact that it can take pretty much all Ruger 1022 accessories is awesome, especially the magazine compatibility. That is really important to me. Now I wish more companies made the Thompson Center style magazines in larger capacity so you could have a essentially a Ruger BX25 magazine with a bolt hold open. The gun seems to be very accurate. It seems to be well built. Let's just say it exceeded my expectations. The only minor issues I had little bit of a gritty trigger and the cheek weld on the riser is just a little bit too high. Things I could easily overcome and probably most other shooters wouldn't mind at all but pretty much especially like the trigger it can be upgraded. After all as I said it takes other Ruger accessories so you can change out this trigger group with something that's a little bit more upgraded if you like. So overall, very, very impressed with this gun. I think it's a great value for your money. I think it offers things that Ruger doesn't offer and I kind of wish Ruger would up their game and kind of match what companies like Thompson Center are doing with their own designs. So on my star system, how would I rate the TCR-22 by Thompson Center? Well, this thing did exceed my expectations. When I first got this thing into the Texas Gun Vault for review, I wasn't too excited. I was like, okay, it's a Ruger 10-22 copy. How much fun can it really be? It exceeded my expectations, but I still have those couple of issues. Very, very, very minor, however. So this thing is almost a perfect review. 4.75 stars out of 5. I mean, as close as you can possibly get to a perfect review. And I would highly recommend this firearm to anybody looking for a 22 rifle. I'm very, very impressed with it. Very well built. It's fun. It's exciting. Lots of options. Well built. Seems to work reliably. All different types of ammo. Man, it is just really cool. So if you're thinking about a Ruger 1022, go take a look at a Thompson Center TCR 22, see if it's in your budget, and if you like the options it offers over the standard Ruger. You might wanna go in this direction, but 4.75 stars out of five for such a cool little 22 rifle. Just go out to the range, go out to the farm, plink a little bit. Yeah, there's just so much fun to be had with 22 long rifle. It's just a great caliber for beginners. It's a great caliber for training. It's a great caliber 
just all around to have fun with. And so I think this rifle fits that niche perfectly. It just does so much so well. It's affordable, it's fun, reliable, great caliber. Well, I'm just singing its praises. It won me over in this range report, so I really like it. 4.75 stars out of five. What do you guys think? Do you guys own any Thompson Center firearms? Do they interest you if you don't own one? And what do you think about the upgrades of this gun over a standard 1022? Would it be something that you're willing to look at over a Ruger because of those options? I'd like to know in the comment section below. So, as always, thanks for watching.